My jacket wouldn't let go of it. Wanted someone down there to keep him company. Someone to get drowned with him. Not drowned. Stabbed. It's my mail. Monsieur de Crow. Jean-Pierre. Jean-Pierre? I'm not sure where it'll leave. I'll back this afternoon, Petrol. I'll get some brandy. No, not yet. I've got half the river to heave up first. <laughs> Police? <laughs> oh. Tell them the corpse has gone home. No, no, I want a river man like myself, one of my own men. <laughs> we stick together on the canals. Come on, Jean-Pierre. Tell me about Lille. Did you find a girl, eh? Oh, well, you know what it is like, Petzl. <laughs> Papa, Papa, come inside. Well, go on, answer the door. What do you think you paid for? <laughs> and I'll sack you if you tell me. <laughs> oh. It's a police officer to see you. Ah, and a part time, too. Come in. What's your name? Chief Inspector McRae. Uh, any good? Sit down. Let's uh, have a bottle of wine, eh? Mathilde, fit something decent, right? Now. Stop. 
Stop that! Yours? Yep, my own two of them. Three chalk quarries, 24 tugs, 18 diesel barges, and a couple of dredgers. Hmm. What else do you want to know? Do you know who attacked you last night? <laughs> of course not. You're the detective, you'll find out. What happened? You'll have to find that out too, I don't remember. What, nothing at all? Except that I was walking along the quayside, and the next thing I knew, I was lying on the ground with that fool of a lockkeeper fussing around me. Oh. Be any idea who might have done it? What, any uh, enemies, you mean? Oh, yeah, hundreds of them. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know. Come on in, don't hang about in the hall. This is Inspector McGray. He's come to find out my murderer, my wife. How do you do, madam? Well, put it down on the floor, anywhere. <laughs> she does her own shopping still. She doesn't have to. She just can't get out of it. <laughs> the inspector wants to know if I have any enemies. Well? I don't know any. Well, of course you do. Let's start with the family. Now, last night, my daughter and her husband came to dinner. He's a nasty piece of work for a start. Go on, tell him what they said. All sorts of things. Now, go on, tell him. Bert started it, remember? She said... Emile. Oh, no, she didn't say Emile. She said she was going to have a baby, and that her husband would have to resign his commission. He's in the army, God help France, because they couldn't afford a nanny on captain's pay. <laughs> you know, what else did he say? I have forgotten. Oh, no, you haven't. Come on, tell him. He said you spent plenty of money elsewhere. No, he didn't say elsewhere. On... Well? On women. Uh-huh. What else? On the one upstairs. Ah, that's better. Now run along. Oh, and tell Matilda, Harry, we'll have a bottle of champagne, will you? Yes. She's going to cry in a minute, and it's horrible. I don't drink champagne. Oh, you'll drink this. It's extra dry. Still 1929. <laughs> you know, we'll have a bottle of champagne, because you're a big man, too. And I like big men. Tell me. Who is the one upstairs? Rose. Used to work at Maxim's. Girlfriend of mine. I gave her the flat overlooking the garden. Oh, no, that's all over and done with now. She spends her time knitting. Do you own the house? Of course. I own the whole district. Here. Where's that wine? Open the door so that I can shout, will you? Oh, no, is it? Oh, it's you, Jean. Come on in. This is Inspector McGray. He's come to find out who chucked me in the river last night. And my son, Jean. Well, go on, shake hands with him. He's not going to drag you off to the nearest dungeon. Monsieur? Come on in, sit down. We'll all have a drink, eh? Where's that wine? I'm sorry, Papa. I have work to do. Oh, books, books, books. Always at it, eh? <laughs> all right, me boy. Off you go to work. <laughs> Au revoir, monsieur. Au revoir. Yes, he's studying to be a librarian. Wanted to be a priest, but they wouldn't have him. He's a funny lad. Quiet, shy, not strong. <laughs> not like me. But I like him. You see, I have got a tender side to my nature, after all. Do you want the wine iced, Emile? No, I want it now. Great God, anyone would think you were treading out the vintage with your own ten toes. Hmm? Why only two glasses? Aren't you going to have some? No, thank you, Emile. In the morning, it gives me a headache. I must see to lunch. Huh? Headache! <laughs> These women, they're all the same. At least most of them. <laughs> I married that one for her money. She was the Patron's daughter. I was in the Stokehold. And now I keep his widow in a flat of her own round the corner. <laughs> she knits, too. They all knit. <laughs> Here's your drink coming up. Are all these barges yours? Yeah, most of them. Including the one the old man fell off, the man you grabbed? What, Gasser? Yeah. Oh, he's not so old. Or at least if he is, I am. We grew up together, sailed the same barge together. Yes, that one's mine, the Golden Fleece. <laughs> Is that his daughter? Is that his daughter? How can I tell? I can't see from here. She's beautiful. 
Yes, she's beautiful. For heaven's sake, man, if you're going to drink, drink. <laughs> Marius, you kid. What do you have, Bebe? Come on off. Two cups. <laughs> Cognac. Oh, no, Gus, I haven't you had enough. Cognac. He'll end across the road if you don't give it him. Yeah. Where do I stand if he gets into trouble again? Jim? Jim? Cognac? Police. Yes. Watch out, Gus, police. <laughs> All right, Bebe, that'll do. Uh, you a lock keeper? <laughs> <laughs> Promotion. <laughs> no, I drive one of those traction engines that pull the barges up to the river. Uh, been here long? No, only a year or two. Hey, Gassa, haven't you something to tell the inspector? Huh? Hey. What did you say? <laughs> Leave him. <laughs> been drinking all day. That'll be the corner if I need to come through. They'll want you, Bebe. Ah, no hurry. Bebe! Ah, you'd think they were going somewhere. So, he's paid to do the job. <laughs> he thinks he ought to be lock keeper. <laughs> uh, then we'd never get anywhere. Cognac. Ah, look, as I told you, I can't give you any more. Take it out of this. Well, guess so. Have you something you want to tell me? I'm a police officer. I'd like to ask you one or two questions. Sit down, please. Uh, is that your child? My stepchild, I say. Oh. Monsieur Gassin is your father, isn't he? Yes. And your mother? She she died, they say. But last night, did anyone come aboard? Someone did? Uh, who was it? He came. Well, can you tell me his name? Why him, the patron? He should you crow? You sure? He came down here? I didn't open the door. I was going to bed. He called out to me. What time is it? Look, was it long before your father fell into the water? I, I don't know. I don't know. Tell me, do you know Monsieur de Croix well? Oh, yes. Hmm? Well, what's he come here for? What he comes for all the time. I'm talking about Monsieur Emile, not his son. Oh, Jean never came. Do you no. Know, you know him? Oh, yes. Hmm. 
And it's his father who comes here who tries to... Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. No, look, don't worry. Germany, Dortmund Ems, Rhine, Main Danube. You know, you could take a barge into Russia. If you had the time. <laughs> yeah, it'd take time. You know, it's a tranquil life on the barges. You chug along quietly through flat fields, a row of poplars, a few houses, a lock, a town, and more fields. You know, Gus Andy Crow must have started in the days when they had a horse to pull the barge. And now, the golden fleece goes up there. With an old drunk on board, and a simple girl, and a babe in arms. And who stabbed the crow? That's not really the problem at all, you know. There's something about this case that hasn't started yet. Mm. We'll have to watch it. Yeah. Go down to the lock, Luca. Keep an eye on things. Uh, what special things? Gasser, the girl, and who is the father of that child? Oh, and Luca. That young engine driver. He smiles too much. <laughs> I don't have to speak Dutch to a girl from Holland. If her bard stops here for the night, she'll speak French in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Some people never leave you alone. He doesn't like the police, monsieur. Is that what I look like? Well, you're not a river man. <laughs> What's he doing now? He's, he's going to cross the plank. <laughs> He's made it! <laughs> <laughs> Who's the father of her child? Who says it's hers? Isn't it? Oh, they were away for four months. At the end of last year, they went up to Rotterdam. When they came back, they had the baby with them. Well, guess how's not as old as all that. Some lockkeeper's wife, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Eagle Four is due from Rotterdam. Come on, baby. I hope the captain's daughter's still friendly. Oh, he <laughs> loves his work tonight. <laughs> the barges ever carry passengers? Not official ones. Only for the patrol. I mean, like... Like who? Well, you know what I mean. I'll find out soon enough. The boy was ill at the end of last year. He went for a month on the Golden Fleece. What boy? Well, Jean de Croix, of course. The patrol, sir. And what am I supposed to do with these? We thought as you were convalescent, Papa. Who says I'm convalescent? But you suffered a serious injury, Papa. Ah, serious injury. Ah, McGray. Good. <laughs> You're an early riser like me. Some coffee? No, thank you. Oh, no, of course. Calvados, isn't it? <laughs> or Bert. Tell Gaston to get up to Bercy and start loading. He's late already. My daughter and a fool of a husband. Oh. You are? Thank you. Well, what did your man find out at the bistro yesterday? 
My man? Oh, don't fool about. We all know that he was there. They should know what he learned. Not that my son went on a cruise on the Golden Fleece last year. Yeah. And that nobody knows where the baby's from. I do. Oh, you're a great detective, aren't you? <laughs> well, whose is it? The girl's. What makes you so sure? Because when I went upon the barge yesterday, she's just been feeding the child, not with a bottle. <laughs> you are a great detective indeed. <laughs> well, now tell me, the father, who is he? Uh, that's another question. No, come on, I want a straight answer. You think it's me, don't you? Oh, I know my reputation, so do you. But you were never more wrong. Oh, damn it, I suppose I shall have to tell you why. Have you got any children? We had a girl, she died. Yes, I got several. There's my son, you've met him, he's not strong. My daughter's a bitch and a stupid one at that. Grapes they brought me, grapes! Go on, have some. And then, well, there's old Gassin. Old Gassin had a wife, an amazing woman, beautiful. I don't know why I did it, but I did. You see, Arlene is my daughter. Now do you see? Some of it. And Gassin's wife died in childbirth. Do you know about you? I don't know. And I don't know the father of Arlene's baby. Tell me, what do you earn? 1500 a month? More or less. You know, I'll give you double that if you'll come and work for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, it's not a bribe. It's an offer. Oh, I'm checking your resignation this afternoon and we'll draw up a contract over dinner. Why? Well, oh, because I like you. You've got some sense. You're big, and you don't talk too much. And I could trust you. <laughs> that means money in my business. What would I do? Oh, go about up and down. Keep an eye on things. Sometimes here, down at the head office, down the quarries, up the canals. See who's pinching what and how much. <laughs> oh, come on, say you'll do it. The rest of my staff are halfwits. And the general manager's an expert on crossword puzzles. What the devil's that? Yes, stop that noise or I'll come up there and make you. Stop it, Mathilde, or I'll give you something to shout about. Oh, no, no, monsieur, no. Well, what's the matter? What is it? It's Monsieur Jean. I went upstairs with his coffee. Come on, what is it? He's hanged himself. Look after her. Oh. Where'd you come? They just found this. Hmm? I attacked my father and now I punish myself. Forgive me, please, everyone. Mother, do not grieve. The sort of thing a schoolboy writes when he wants to dramatize himself. He was hanging by the window. Yeah. Well, I suppose that closes the case. Oh, no. Why did you say like a schoolboy? Well, surely it sounds false in every line. Yeah, false. So why did he kill himself? You go, you better go home. Right. And you? I think I'll go down to the barge for a drink. I thought you'd come. Do you drink Dutch gin?
Hein, Jean-Pierre? Oh, Petron. Ah, Marius? Monsieur? Ah, you said I ordered cognac. It's on the house, monsieur. <laughs> Well, what did you make of that little episode? But you had just been telling Gassin what you told me this morning about you and his wife. <laughs> I had to. If he's going to believe evil of me, it might as well be the true evil. Marius, two more, please. Monsieur? My house is like an undertaker's. Women everywhere. Women in black with their noses red with weeping. <laughs> Good health. I couldn't stand it. I came out. I'm not going back what's more until the funeral's over. Tomorrow? Yes, in a hurry. Best to get it over and done with. Oh, why did my son do it, Maybury? Why? You don't believe the note he left? No, oh, of course not. Do you know that he didn't attack you? If I know anything. Do you know who did? Mm, the great detective again. Good night, Petro. Good night, Jean-Pierre. Have you uh, thought any more about my offer? Oh, yeah. Still stands. Do you want me to find your attacker first? <laughs> oh, 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 you're brilliant. <laughs> you know, you're very clever. Look, I tell you what. You find him, and I'll tell you then whether I want him found or not. Still open? The door is. Come with us. Are you uh, staying? Yes, I think I will. I'm off. Home? No. I told you, anywhere but home. There are plenty of beds in Paris. <laughs> Still on duty? On a night like this? No. Been to the cinema. You live far from here? No. Where does he live? On one of the empty barges down by the quay. You're coming here often? Why? Oh, my customers. Oh, they're all right. They don't get into trouble, but you know. Oh, yes, I know. They have too many Dutch cigars in their pockets to feel happy about a policeman coming all the time. Hmm? You know how it is with the canal boats. I'm not worried about a little contraband. It's not my business. What is? I wish to heaven I knew. She'll tell you nothing. Thank you. 
what's that? The land? Yes, sir. Good. Got the ammunition? Oh, here, sir. Fine. Ah, better. Well, I guess, sir. Who's oh, taking his boot laces? I did. Yes. Routine. Give them back to me. There you are. Well, Pierre Cassin, you've been arrested on a charge of buying a firearm without a certificate. And ten rounds of ammunition. Might have been more serious charges. I haven't killed anyone yet. If you want to. Could be. Do crow? Perhaps. Okay. Roll your own cigarettes, eh? Is this your wife? All right. What are you going to do with me now? Do you know anything about the attack on Ducrow? No. Or his son's suicide? Nothing. Do you know why Babea was hanged? No. You don't think I could have done it? No. What do you know? Not much. Are you any wiser than I am? All right, you can go. We'll keep that. Well, don't do anything foolish. What could I do? Don't forget, you've got a daughter. Have I? I wish I hadn't said that. Mm. Luca, you follow him. But Bertrand, he knows me. I don't know anyone who's not one of them. Yes, if I mean, he I... gets another gun, pull him in. I... Police officer again. His name's Inspector McRae. Come in. <laughs> You'll have a drink? Thank you. Now, where are you going? To lie down. Her condition, you know. Look, I'll give you a hundred thousand francs if she's pregnant. And she's all a ruse to get money out of me. Oh, really, Father? Yes, and you go and lie down with her, and a fat lot of good it'll do you. Father. Here you are. Thank you. Sit down. Tell me. Why did you arrest Gus, huh? He bought a firearm without a certificate. For me? I think so. Mm, so do I. But I was ready for him. Oh. And I've got a permit for mine. Do you want to see it? Yeah. You weren't at the funeral? No, I was busy. Yes, I wish I'd been. It was a waste of time. The boy's dead. What more can you do for him? I never knew him very well. And yet you killed him. What? Get out! Tell me. Why did I kill him? How did I kill him? Tell me. Not with your hands. Well, how? He was in love with Aline. I never knew. Well, that doesn't make me his killer. The blame's on the man who attacked me. And uh, we both know his name. Yes. 
Yes, we do indeed. <laughs> Look, uh, let's tell the family. Eh? <laughs> Jean, Bert, come down here at once. It's something important. Come on, hurry. I'll bring my old faggot down or she'll never come. <laughs> Mathilde, get some aperitif and glasses quickly, will you? You sent for us, Inspector? <coughs> yes. Your father-in-law has something he wishes to say to you. Oh, do you know what it is? Yes, I think so. Well, I hope that there will be no scandal. <laughs> do you? René has to think of his position. Oh, yes. In some regiments, you know, when an officer disgraces himself, his comrades leave him alone with a revolver. Indeed. And he knows what to do with it. Come on, you old sheep. This concerns you, too. <laughs> Come on, sit down over there. <laughs> Your son-in-law was just saying that he thinks we ought to leave you alone with a pistol. Oh, what? no. Ha! What a family. What a crew. Look at her. Knitting already. All right, you two, sit down there. Gasson! Come on in, old fella. This concerns you, too. Come on in. Ah, we'll all have a friendly drink together. Mathilde, don't let Gasson in, will you? Do we really need him in here? A family matter, after all. The father of my daughter is a member of the family. Here you are. You others, help yourselves. Come on in, Gasson. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We were at school together. <laughs> you know, you look damned old. That makes me old, too. You know, the trouble was... that I thought I was stronger than I am when I went on board the Golden Fleece that night and found a man peering through the porthole at Arlene. Well, I didn't say anything. I just went for him. But he held me back. He was young and strong. And he laughed at me said that he'd got more right to be there than I had, because he was the father of the child. So I went for him again. Oh, you'd have done the same. Then he drew something out of his pocket. I felt a stab in the back. And the next minute, I was in the river. There. But who was it? <laughs> You're a bigger fool than you look. Go on, you tell her. Bebe. Yes, Bebe, that smiling devil of a longshoreman. He abused Arlene's innocence. Tried to kill me and caused the death of my son. That's why I killed him. Emile! Well, somebody had to. You wouldn't have. And you couldn't have. So there it was. Perhaps the worst thing that he did was to make it necessary for me to tell you about this other business. Yes, that was the worst. Because after all, you and I, <laughs> grown up together, sailed together, fought together, what does all this and all these women matter, eh? <laughs> Come on, have another drink. Ventoy Quarry, a stick of my own dynamite. We always carried some on the boat, he used to use it for fishing. And you would have done that to me. You really would. Why? Because of your wife? Because of what I did? Oh, guess, uh, what's a woman between men? She died 
Because of you? Well, I only did what any man might. As Bebert did. Yes, as Bebert did. As Bebert killed my son. Not with his hands, but by what he did to others. Oh, but I'm not like that. You and I, we're friends. You can't feel towards me as I felt towards him. May I go now? All right, guess so. Inspector, after what he's done, I really must protest on behalf oh, of... Oh, quiet! He's no danger now. He's like the dynamite without the fuse. Inert. Dead. Cold. Finished. Here we go. My father-in-law's statement is entirely without confirmation. What'll I get for Bebe? Depends on the jury. Maybe only two years. Well, I need a rest. I've shouted at everyone for far too long. It's funny, you know. I never could sleep without you beside me. Oh, Emile, you're a good man. Oh, great heaven above. <laughs> Bear's just off to Rouen on Seagull 3. Any instructions for him? Que des affaires? Let's go by boat. Jean-Pierre, is your barge ready?
Here's the Tsolferina. That means he's taking the middle arch. Right? That's right. You know, you're learning fast. 